All right, on to the next session here, which is a look at passive monitors with Jao. Jao, you want to give us a rundown of this blueprint? Okay, so basically the idea is to be able to have at least one monitor that is not an active participant of the quorum, does not uh, is not required to acknowledge or accept Paxos proposals but will nonetheless get those proposals. Basically, we would have a monitor that would be somewhat up to date with the rest of the quorum and thus could be easily flipped into the active set and thus start participating in the quorum if need be. For instance, for um, in case of a monitor failing and thus not having enough monitors to form a quorum, we could try to have a passive monitor being brought in to form a new quorum or for disaster recovery uh, thingies. Anyway, um, that's the basic idea. Initially, I had this idea so that I could have a copy of level DB or a monitor to play with without affecting the rest of the quorum. Um, so that would, uh, that was my initial idea. Sage mentioned very well that this could be used as a backup monitor and all that sorts of stuff. Although, yeah, lost my pen. Um, although this has a bunch of small issues that need to be ironed out. One of which would be how to actually get a passive monitor into the active set of monitors uh, and when to actually decide what to do with. Um, for, uh, okay, let's see. So given that we have three monitors or better yet, let's, someone mentioned this in the blueprint. Uh, Say that we have uh, three monitors in one room, two monitors in another room. We have one passive monitor. If the room with three monitors fail, can we just um, bring up the, the passive monitor and have that passive monitor forming a quorum in the second room? <clears throat> Would this cause potentially a, a, a split brain situation? So this is the kind of issues that need to be ironed out, um, because the the rest of the, the rest of the other issues are basically uh, tiny things such as will this monitor participate in an election? Uh, how will this will this monitor uh, get into the quorum after if the, there is no quorum, for instance? Um, what are the actions we will have to take to actually get this monitor into quorum and um, whether clients will talk to passive monitors or not to alleviate the load on the active monitors. All those sorts of things are uh, a bit trivial compared to the split brain issue. Um, so I hope this gives uh, some insight on the problem at hand. Um, Danny mentioned that he would be interested in this talk as well. So maybe he has something to, to say before I continue. Yeah, that uh, I, I'm interested in it because I, I wrote it down in the Etherpad. Um, we struggling with uh, two room setup, and I thought uh, that maybe could help in some way, but. I'm not really sure if it's solving the problem at the end, um, that if the room with the more monitors is failing. So I imagine that um, at least to be able to have something that maybe solves you need maybe to link the passive monitors to one of the rooms and that for, therefore you need to be to say this passive monitors acts as a backup for the uh, for these two uh, kind of um, monitors and not for the other three. Okay, so I don't know if it's really makes sense. So, but but that, that is the problem I have, and I maybe I thought if that's maybe helping solving the problem without having a third room. So, 
I let me see if I got this right. Um, basically, you want to or you would wish to have monitor being a direct backup of one other single monitor. Yeah, well, a, a, a monitor a, that a only takes in a, yeah, if, if, yeah, that only can maybe automatically kick in if one of the monitors in a special room is failing. So I need maybe a, able to to link them okay. together. So, in other words, you need the uh, passive to be able to prove that the one it's replacing is dead to avoid a split brain. Is that what you're getting at? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, something, yeah, some maybe something like that, or even be able not not if even one room is failing, but uh, um, to make sure that the a special monitor is only kicking in if a main uh, one monitor of this side is failing and not on the other side to not run in situations where you maybe yeah. have yeah more months on one side than you wanted uh, initially. So wouldn't it be? Yeah. I see. Yes. Yeah, if, if you did consider use... a monitor like a backup um, for like what, yeah. exactly one other monitor, like a standby, yeah. might some of my things. Um, that would probably if we could have a, block, a blacklist right. mechanism for like a blacklisting the original um, active one once the passive one gets promoted, that might fix um, solve any kind of split brain issue. Yeah, I I was initially t taking the the simplest approach, which would be to delegate that job to the administrator. So if you, you ran out of quorum, yeah, you will yeah. not automatically add, uh, add a new monitor to the to the quorum. Mm -hmm. So okay. you would still be out of quorum for a while until someone actually pressed the, the buttons and made the yeah. passive monitor come back to quorum. Um, yeah, but okay. again, my initial okay. idea was to yeah, it would be Sorry, also a solution, yeah, to do it via yeah. um, external monitoring. And get, yeah. If you have a sequence of hot standbys for a particular rank, I mean, they, we don't have ranks mm -hmm. yet, but we would after this. Uh, let's say the, the rank end monitor has standby 0 through n. You could, uh, uh, standby k would be, could safely take over as long as it has an assurance from everything greater than k that they aren't, uh, currently active. Does that make sense? So the active yeah. would be allowed to run as long as the passives affirmatively tell it that they're not running. That would allow you to do it. Mm. Although I guess that would reduce the case, or that would promote any passive failure to an active failure, which would be, yeah, never mind. That would so be bad. My, my problem here would be to actually have, say that you actually have two physical rooms, distinct rooms, and a link is severed and if you a given passive we will would not be able to communicate with the other passives it could assume they are down simply down and would take over so in that case yeah, you would probably hit the, the split brain issue with ha having two quorums that are not aware of each other and this is why I would love to, at first, to just delegate this to the admin and let the admin s say that, yeah, this is not a problem. We'll just bring this one passive monitor up or back to the quorum. And this would be a very dumb approach, but as a first approach, it would be a yeah, simple it would, approach. It would be great as a first approach. It would be great. Yeah. Moreover, so uh, isn't there a problem? Sorry, oh, go ahead. No, go. Oh. I was going to say, if you're not allowing the passive to, or if the passive isn't required to see proposals, then it could be behind, right? No, it would be, a, it would be, okay, yeah, it, maybe, yes. Uh, in the that case, the is... only way to correctly add it into the quorum would be to have an existing quorum. No. That would avoid the split so, point case. That, that doesn't, that's not really true. Um, so we have the recovery mechanism. Yeah, it happens after quorum is established. Yeah, because you need the quorum to be sure of an, an authoritative state. Yeah, but if you could still, the monitor that is behind is still participating in the quorum. 
So you yeah, go, but, but go I'm first saying, through an election. Cover, you don't know what to recover to unless you have a quorum of from before. You need a survivor. Sure, quorum, right? but here's the thing. Say that you still you have just two monitors in the in your cluster, one dies, but eventually comes back for some reason. Yeah. Uh, it will, okay, bad example. You have three monitors in the quorum, one dies. The the second one that you have you still have a quorum, but the second one dies as well. The one that died previously comes back to quorum, uh, comes back alive. It establishes a quorum with the remaining monitor and gets the, the new update. Assuming it didn't f fall behind enough so that it would have to sync the full state, but assuming you're still within right, that because limited any, 10 any, versions. Any, be, be, because any rights past that point would have had to have been witnessed by, by one of them, by one of the two, right? Because yeah. rights would have had to have been seen by two out of three. But if you yes. have one surviving monitor from that time and a passive monitor, which isn't necessarily up to date, you actually don't know for sure that the surviving monitors date is sufficiently current. Yeah. Right? That, need that is also true. Yeah. So the rules yeah. would be the same as if you were expanding the number of monitors. Yeah, it but seems like that's it's just equivalent to just adding more monitors. Um, yeah, almost. it seems like it's, it's it's an optimization that saves you most of the recovery work, but the actual correctness part isn't really different. I'm not sure how that actually solves the split brain issue. Uh, because whichever quorum, so as long as you follow the quorum rules, you have a quorum of the original monitors, and only one side of the split brain can have that. That's right? not necessarily true if you have two, okay, uh, two monitors on each side. Neither of them uh, would have a quorum. Yeah, but if you bring up uh, a passive monitor on one of the sides. They won't be able to add it because they won't have a quorum. But if you had three on one side and two on the other, then the three side would be able to add it. I think that's the idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The other two would not have a quorum. Oh, no, they... Here's the thing, unless the other two knew about the passive monitor bring, be, being brought back to, being brought into the, into the active set, whatever, they would still be able to form a quorum. Or no, be, let me rephrase this. If you have one passive monitor being brought up in, in both rooms, both rooms would assume they had a quorum. I'm sorry, one active monitor brought up in each? Yeah. But then neither of them would have a quorum because a size two nope, monitor because would require they would... two, both of them. Nope, because say that you have actually four monitors in the in the in the quorum, you only need three monitors to form a quorum. If either room is not able to communicate with the other and you bring one passive monitor up in each of the rooms, you have two Sets uh, having three oh yes, the, but the, you would have you would have a two two monitor quorums and two additional machines you were hoping to add to the quorum. I thought this is usually how Paxos cluster expansions work. They they usually require an existing. Either that or or, or an administrator needs to say I know for sure that you're the only alive one and I want you to use your state that kind of thing. But if you normally if you want to do it. In the strictly correct way, you need a quorum of the original monitors to persist the fact that you're expanding the quorum. Yeah, but we don't really do that, I think. For instance, the example in point synchronization. If you only have one, if you had three monitors and two died, you can just bring one monitor up and it will synchronize from a non-existent quorum, which is just one single monitor because the other two well, have no, died horrible deaths. Ah, but the administrator gave it permission, right? Well, it brought, brought a new monitor up. 
basically that's the the full the basic idea what i'm getting at is that it's it's equivalent to if if you had a three monitor quorum two in one room one in the other and a split brain happened between those two rooms and one of the osds in the other room died then you could just as easily bring up a new monitor in each room and both rooms would think they had two 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 monitors right that's not different from bringing up a passive monitor in each room. So whatever mechanism prevents the former should also prevent the latter. Okay, so I've... <clears throat> yeah. It speeds us up, but, you know, maybe yeah. not that much difference. It's anyway. the difference between starting up a new VM with a new monitor and or having still a running monitor and say you are responsible now, so you are in the cluster. Correct. Compared to bringing up a new VM and deploying a new one. I mean, so there's the, there's the operational and efficiency difference about if you're bringing up yeah. a new VM with a new monitor, you have to fill its store first, the synchronization part. But I think yeah. the part where you empower it to be a deciding part of the monitor quorum isn't different. I think that part's the, the yeah. same. Probably. Yeah, I, I still think that we have room to have a split brain issue here. Well. If we do this automatically, if we have the administrator basically stating which monitors would be that are to be brought into the active set, uh, in that case we don't incur this in this issue. But if we do this automatically, we may still incur. And this is basically due to the fact that each side of each room will basically see five monitors in the active set and each room will have at least three up and each room will be able to form a quorum and this will happen regardless of that monitor uh, regardless of a quorum existing on each of the rooms because we allow this to happen the monitor will be able to form a quorum as long as we have a major, uh, strict majority of monitors available to well, form I'm saying quorum. The, the, the mon map could instead have two classes of monitor. It could have active monitors. That's what we currently consider to yes. be monitors and passive monitors. And you're not allowed to Basically. form a quorum with passive monitors without performing a quorum operation that promotes them. Yeah, that that would work. That's yes. what I'm thinking. It, it, it's the same as the processes okay. of okay. adding a, a monitor. You just have to dis distinguish between them. Uh, I'm, I'm reasonably sure that uh, uh, Zookeeper has has machinery like this, right? For uh, non-cluster participating read shards. I can't recall Zookeeper anymore, but yeah. so it's been a while since I last read, read the the whole paper. There's um, probably some important subtlety that we're missing, but I think in principle. Yeah. Um, on my notes, I had literally said that the admin would have to tell a passive monitor to f forcefully join the quorum. Yeah, that's not necessarily a bad step either. Yeah. But uh, because th that's the, we would likely have to tell each of the monitors it would be forming quorum with to actually let this monitor to form the quorum. Because otherwise they will have no idea what's going on if a passive monitor yeah, just in... starts an election, right? Well, um, in the automatic case, the the whatever leader wins the election in the surviving quorum would have to have some heuristic that causes it to make a decision to promote one of the existing passives yeah. to an active, and then have another election with it as an as an active. I would but assume that that is assuming that you would have enough monitors to form a quorum, a new quorum. That's true. Yes. But you in, in the case, in the case that, that you don't, you would still need an administrator to get out of jail free card. Yeah. Basically, yes. Um, moving from active to passive is a bit more simple. 
as long as you have a quorum that is at least n plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. As long as you have an extra monitor and that after passing, moving it to a passive state, as long as you are... Okay, this may not sense words are... Anyway, um, moving a monitor from passive to, act, to active from... Uh, sorry. From active to passive will require you to have enough monitors to f still have a quorum after Off that monitor time. is passive. Basically, that this is a simple criteria. You will have a quorum, and after removing that monitor from the active set, you still need to be to to have a quorum. You can't just lose a quorum just because someone made a mistake and moved a monitor to passive. That one, I think, is pretty easy to to accomplish. Um, other than that, I I think this will be mostly a matter of consistency. how consistent we um, how actually how up to date with the cluster state we want the passive monitors to be because on one hand we want them to be up to date but on the other hand we don't want to uh, hammer the existing monitors in this case likely the leader and at in the first in a first approach with the responsibility of keep on having these monitors up to date at all times because Paxos proposals, if we have frequent Paxos proposals, we may not, well, send, keep on sending, keeping on sending messages to the passive monitors may just be hammering the leader a bit because instead of updating three or four monitors or whatever, we would be updating uh, an additional monitor or two or three monitors or whatever monitors. Um, one possible solution would be to actually tie um, a passive monitor to a, a random monitor for to for the purpose of receiving updates, so that instead of being the leader, the, res the one responsible for sending these updates. Uh, we could have any monitor doing this. Um, but again, a as a first attempt, just having the leader sending the, the updates would be would be nice and simple. Mm. So but, I was looking yeah. at the ZubiKeeper documentation a little bit, and they have a concept of observers, which don't participate in quorum. Um, but rather than being used for like, HA purposes or op optimizing, adding new members to the quorum, they're used mainly for like read scalability. Seems like they're kind of two different um, use cases. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things I mentioned earlier, I think, uh, whether these passive monitors would serve re client requests, reads, mm -hmm. for instance. But if, I'm sorry. If they are to serve reads, we need to make sure they are up to date, as up to date as the remaining cluster, because we don't want to serve old maps to clients. Um, but on the other hand, we may just drop any client request, or better yet, have the clients just ignoring the passive set. That would simplify things as well. Um, so you're so, interested in the, in, the, in the optimization of adding more monitors rather than um, trying to expand the yeah, reset. And, yeah, so that's one of the pains of have if, if you have a, a cluster that lost a monitor or two monitors or the sufficient number of monitors to lose quorum and you will and you and for some reason you are waiting on new monitors to be brought up, you will be well yeah, it may take take some time, depending on how big uh, a monitor store is or how bad or what in if your cluster is in in a bad shape or or something. Mm -hmm. So I think this would be the the primary use case as a as a first step. 
just making that sure sense. that you can get your quorum back as soon as possible. Um, after mm -hmm. that, I yeah, I think this has the potential to be optimized and expanded and all that. And it would be amazing to do so. Um, especially, yeah, OK. With regard to reads, here's the, here's the thing. Unless the client is aware that those monitors are only for reads, we would still have to forward all the messages to, to the leader, all the write requests. And that would be basically acting as a peon. But uh, a slightly out of date peon, which we would not be able to have because we don't have, we don't want to serve old reads, right. old versions. So it's basically the same as having peons. And so I don't think serving reads would, or whatever, serving clients would be benef beneficial in some way. Yeah, it doesn't seem like most of the load on the monitors is from reads anyway. Yeah. Um, aside from this, I don't think I have that much more. Um, Danny, do you have anything else you want to discuss? Um, not regarding uh, this. I have a Maybe if, if, this, if there's some time, I could discuss something else. Uh, uh, we have the problem, as I said, to set up a cluster in, in two rooms and decided to have a third room now from the Chrome. If we have a run-in problem that uh, the one side is failing um, with the less monitors, so to keep the cluster at least at life. But um, we discussed uh, a problem in case of split brain, even with three rooms where you get in the situation where your OpenStack cluster is failing because OpenStack also need to build a core board over the database and decided to uh, have a split brain situation decides for the other side for some reason. And Seth is deciding for the different side. If there's any way to have a generic Chrome device or some way from the outside to force a Chrome um, to the monitors to force, for example, Seth to the other side because uh, the databases from OpenStack decided to have this this, this side. So, um, would there be any way to have some kind of generic device or some way to input or push the cluster to to the side in a split brain situation? I I don't think I really understand the and understood the 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 problem here. You have. Two rooms. Uh, for example, I have two two rooms, uh, two monitors on each side, and have a okay. third room that is not really in, so a side with OSDs or something like that. But there's only a monitor on that to run in the case where we have a split frame situation between them because the network connection between room one and two is dead. So we have a third device running and deciding which side is winning. But we have the same problem on the OpenStack side, and OpenStack is deciding. Uh, I run still running in room one, and uh, Seth is deciding I run into a room two. So uh, the complete clusters that again, at least from the OpenStack side. So my question is: Is there any way to force a quorum from the outside to one of the both sides? We have um, the same decision on OpenStack side and on Seth side. So, so something like a generic quorum uh, device. If we were talking about what we currently have, it would likely be, well, you just inject a new mon map and okay, yeah. force, that way. Yeah. yeah, that would force the, the, the decision on which one would be able to form a quorum. Just shut down two monitors on one of the rooms and force the other two monitors to be in just the single two monitors in the in the mon map, for instance. Uh, but with this, maybe you could just have a third monitor, a passive monitor, and just fire it up on one of the sides. Yeah. And then you would have a, a quorum, and you would not have to decide anymore, because mm -hmm. that would be the 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 one side with the the additional monitor. 
Yeah, I think okay. that it would... In monitoring tasks mostly, so to monitor decisions and force one side, then. I suppose yeah, it seems like if you like you could it. have passive monitors on both sides and um, have it's an, it's that it's an administrative action to actually promote it to active. Um, look at what which side the other HA stat parts of the stack have have chosen, which room they've chosen, and promote it in that room. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's fine. It's okay. At least a solution for the problem. Uh, well. Any other questions or no. comments no. from anyone in the call? I haven't been paying much attention to the I to IRC, but okay. Anyone? If you if no one says anything, I will go out for dinner. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Thanks, Joel. Okay. Cool.